Hey guys, and welcome back to Let's Play Bloodborne Kita Edition. Welcome. So, uh, as you can see, I'm wearing a different set, uh, mainly because I wanted to show off some of your guys' uh, fashion-born stuff that you were sending me. So this was from Mike2011 QWERTY, was telling me to check out uh, Black Hooded Iron Helm with the Crow Feather Garb mixed with the Bone Ash Gauntlets and Leggings. So that is what this set is right here. Um, so, yeah, I just want to show off a couple of them that you guys have been showing me, which is, uh, you know, different types of cool submissions. So this is more for the badass hunter of hunters, I would think. Alright, so, so then this, right here, as I'm quick cutting to it, is slight variation. I'm just switched it to the Bone Ash Helm, and this is from Tackhurst. Essentially, it was just, head is Bone Ash, uh, chest is Crow, and then the legs is something dark like Crow or Bone Ash, and the hands are anything dark, so... Another Dark Hunter set. Seems like a lot of you guys like these Dark Hunter variations. Alright, and finally I've got from the Monkey Camera, essentially an Assassin's Creed-ass cosplay. This would be, I think, like, one of the later Assassin's Creed's, when it's more Victorian in setting. So this is uh, Knight's Garb, Hunter's Pants, Tomb Prospector Gloves, and Tomb Prospector Hood. And that's a little more Assassin's Creed-esque, so... Yeah, I just want to show off some of the ones that you guys were sending me, and check, uh, check those out too, so... I thought you guys would enjoy seeing that different fashion born. All right, so the reason that I'm back here over in the uh, Cathedral Ward area is because I want to talk to Alfred now, because we, if you guys remember, he had all this dialogue about the Vile Bloods and how he didn't like them, so we want to go talk to him now and see if he's got anything new to say. Oh, good to see you safe. Now, let's think up something to discuss. Just tell me what piques your interest. Well, I'd love to hear you tell me about the Corrupted Vile Bloods again. In his time, Master Lagarius led his executioners into Canehurst Castle to cleanse it of the vile bloods. But all did not go well, and Master Lagarius became a blessed anchor, guarding us from evil. Tragic, tragic times, that Master Lagarius should be abandoned in the accursed domain of the vile bloods. I must free him so that he may be properly honored in martyrdom. So it's funny he's calling Master Logarius a martyr when Master Logarius isn't dead. Well, now he's dead because I kind of killed him. But the point is that he is basically telling us that Master Logarius stayed behind to protect people from the Vile Bloods, and that was essentially why Logarius was where we found him. So the other thing we can do now is give him this unopened summons that we got. And this was the one that we found by Annalise. Aha! Is that... the sigil of Canehurst? I've heard tell of Canehurst nobles and their amusingly pompous invitations. Wonderful! I thank you profusely. I will depart immediately, but first, a token of my gratitude. Wheel Hunter Badge. And the church bow. Ah, I feel my master's hand at work. Praise the good blood. And let us cleanse these tarnished streets. So his tone is suddenly really shifted from what we originally heard. And um, again, with Kanehurst, you can actually see it in the distance over there, which is pretty cool. Um. And one of those windmills that we found in the Forbidden Woods. Actually, wait a second. No, this is Canhurst. Excuse me. It's actually Canhurst over there. So I was thinking that was odd. I wonder what this area is back there then. But yeah, I'm pretty positive that Canhurst is that one over yonder. So, let's see if there's anything else to say. It has been an honor, but I must say goodbye. Let us cleanse these tarnished streets. And may the good blood guide your way. All right, well, let's check out uh, that Wheel Hunter badge we got from him. At the very least. Wheel Hunter badge from the Church's Secret Workshop. Martyr Ligarius led a band of executioners, and this badge was crafted at their dedicated workshop. The wheel symbolizes righteous destiny. Their workshop was a secretive enclave of mystical beliefs and heady fan uh, fanaticism, which served as the backbone of the executioner's unique brand of justice. So... Not too positive of things that we're hearing from this specific thing about the Executioner is that it was 
fanatics and all that that made up the Executioners and is headed by Ligarius. It tells us a little bit about Ligarius, but I'm gonna go ahead and quick cut it and we're gonna go see what's going on with Annalise now. Master, look! I've done it! I've done it! I've smashed and pounded and grounded this rotten siren into fleshy pink pulp! There, you filthy monstrosity! What good's your immortality now? Try stirring up trouble in this sorry state! All mangled and twisted, with every inside on the outside for all the world to see! <laughs> Whoa, Alfred, you have changed, man. You're not the man I thought you were. So, you see him rocking these crazy weapons, this giant wheel uh, of a weapon, and this, this crazy looking gun. Uh, for those of you who read Berserk, actually this wheel weapon is, um, there's a weapon very, very much like that in Berserk. But anyways, point is, Alfred, not the kind man that he seemed at the beginning, so he's actually one of these fanatics from the Executioners. So let's go ahead and talk to him about what, what have you done, man? I mean, look, look at, look at Annalise. What, what is this shit? <laughs> oh. oh. You, is it? Look at this. Thanks to you, I've done it. Well, isn't it wonderful? Now Master can be canonized as a true martyr. <laughs> I've done it. I have. <laughs> Alright, listen. Okay, well we get the roar emoji. Uh, emoji. The roar emote, which I know some people really like, so I can show off some of these. But listen, you don't become a martyr by the fact that a person, like, the, the fact that Annalise is dead. It doesn't make you a martyr. You become a martyr by dying yourself, bruh. For a religious purpose. Alright, so, let's go ahead and uh, just test some of these. So, let's show off Roar. Alright, so there's Roar. And the other one we got was this uh, church bow for male. So we got the female one from the uh, the church lady uh, from Adela. And then this is going to be the one that we just got from him earlier. Very solemn. Very solemn. I really prefer this respect bow though. This was for joining the vile bloods that we got. I think it looks a lot cooler. Anything else? <laughs> I've done it. I have. <laughs> nah, you're just crazy. All right, here's the thing, though. So Alfred went insane. He's and now we also know for 100% sure, as I talked about before, he's wearing the executioner garb. Um, Annalise over here, it's still moving. So if you remember, she is the immortal queen, Annalise of the Vile Blood. So even as pulpy and smashed up as she is, she does still seem to be moving, which is kind of creepy. I think you missed the spot there, Alfred, just so you know. We inspect it, we find the queenly flesh. And then it just writhes eerily if you expect inspect it again. So there we go. It writhes eerily. Let's take a look at this queenly flesh. Or queenly flesh, this... Uh, yeah, this queenly flesh. The remains of Annalise, vile blood queen of Canehurst. What well, remains of Annalise, blood queen of Canehurst. The pinkish lump of flesh remains warm as if cursed. All hail the undying Queen of Blood! While I am still currently... ...a member of the, uh... ...the Elite. I am still a member... ...of the Vile Bloods. I just wanna check something. Have I gotten... No. Alright, so... You could go ahead and attack Alpha right now, and you're gonna get a line of dialogue for doing that, but I'm, I'm not going to. You can go ahead and look up what happens if you do that. Oh, actually, something I didn't notice. There's Annalise's helmet on the ground right there. Also, everything else is kind of writhing and moving around, too. Oh, at least it looked like it was for a second. This stuff on the ground, but I didn't notice that her head was there. That's pretty gruesome. It looks like it's empty, though. Like, there's nothing in it. Hmm... 
Some people have said that the helmet actually looks also like a uh, Griffith's helmet in Berserk. I've heard people talk about. At least I think it's Annalise's helmet they're referring to. Probably because of that beaky shape in the front. But, eh, I don't know. It looks a little bit like it. I see where they're, where you're coming from, if that's your thought. I see the wheel, though. <laughs> Definitely. All right, we're going to go back to the Hunter's Dream first. And then we're going to... We got more, actually, for this Alfred quest to do. All right, so since we got that badge, the wheel badge, we can actually buy more at the uh, Hunter's Dream shop. So let's go ahead and check out what some of it is. So we can now... Also, also I don't know if I ever showed this up. You can now just buy normal Bloodstone shards and Ritual Blood, so... Um, you can just buy this stuff with, uh, Blood Echoes at this point, so, Bloodstone Shards, you can buy as many as you want. Alright, so, first of all, we get Ligarius' Wheel is now an option to buy. Uh, weapon wielded by Martyr Ligarius' Band of Executioners, used to slaughter the vile bloods in Canehurst, bathed in pools of their blood, and forever steeped in their ire, transformed to release the power of the wheel and manifest their lingering rage in a show of utter brilliance. So, that is Ligarius' Wheel... Um, I think what he was wielding was Ludwig's rifle. That's what that looked like to me, which I think I already have one of, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, and then we can also buy the gold Ardeo. That one's expensive. Holy crap. The odd helmet worn by the Band of Executioners, commanded by the Martyr Logarius. The conical gold helmet, symbol of the Executioner, represents luminosity, ambition, and an unflagging resolve to face impurity, staring it down with stern golden spirit. As the great Logarius once said, acts of goodness are not always wise, and acts of evil are not always foolish. But regardless, we shall strive to be good. I'm going to go ahead and drop some blood echoes just so I can buy that wheel, and we can actually maybe uh, play with it a little bit. So let's go ahead and... I've got... A decent amount of these ones. Let's use seven of them. That's probably enough. Yep. More than enough. And we can buy that wheel at least. And you can see... Actually, I don't have enough blood tinge for it. Again, I need ten blood tinge for it, so I really do need to up my blood tinge. But it seems to be strength based. It scales with strength and blood tinge. So, C scaling at strength. So it's definitely a strength weapon. It's got a pretty cool move set, so I definitely want to show it off, but... Gotta start, I gotta get my blood tinge up to 12 so I can start using these really cool items. Both this and the Chikage. Alright, we're gonna head finish off the Alpha quest and then we're going to the Upper Cathedral Ward. So I'll see you guys soon. Alright guys, we are back. Um, if you guys remember, this is right by the Cathedral Ward on the way to Old Yarnum. This is where we first met Alfred. And if you remember, he was praying to the statue here. And now that we look at the statue a little more, and actually... Kind of looks like an executioner, doesn't it? Because you can see that it sort of looks like the conical helmet that the executioners were wearing. And I do think that looks like the executioner's garb. Let me throw it on for a second and let's see if it is. It is. That's the executioner garb. So that statue right there is actually the an executioner that he was praying to. So uh, kind of makes sense now. And we find Alfred is now dead praying to the statue or what he presumably praying to the statue. Don't quite know. Uh, also, you have to wonder if maybe all these right here are dead um, executioners. And that's what this great these graves are. That would be my my guess. But um, so Alfred is dead, and we get the radiance badge from him. I'm fairly certain if you just kill him, you can still get the radiance badge from him, regardless of when you kill him. Um, but I'm not 100% per certain. But by wearing this, it'll actually allow us to join the. Executioner's Covenant, essentially, but other than the fact that it matches up with the um, Vile Bloods, and you're more likely to fight Vile Bloods, I don't think it really does much of anything. That said, it actually is a really good rune. So this is going to increase your Vile HP recovery. So Vile HP recovery up. Radiance, a secret symbol left by Carol Runesmith of Bergenworth. The rune for Radiance adopted by the sworn executioners under Largarius' command. The executioners despise the impure Vile Bloods. And no matter what the circumstances, would never cooperate with the bloodthirsty hunters who serve the undead Queen Annalise. So they really, really strongly despise the Vile Bloods. Gotta do what they can to keep the Healing Church in power of blood administration. The real question is, what happened to our friend Alfred here? Why is he all dead? Now, part of the reason that I did this is just to show you don't have to fight Alfred. You can choose not to, and he's still going to get what's coming to him. But, um, essentially, there's one of two things happens. Either he died, or what's very strongly likely 
is that he killed himself because he too wants to be a martyr. Uh, especially he was so obsessed with the idea of Lucarius becoming a martyr, but I'm not 100% positive. That's actually something that Terramantis pitched to me as an idea for why Alfred was dead there. It's a little strange because you would think that he wants Master Logarius, Master Logarius um, himself uh, to become a martyr. He was so strongly into that concept. Oh, by the way, if uh, people aren't aware, I'm going to Upper Cathedral Ward. This is how you get there as we go into this area. Uh, so anyways, he so strongly wanted Martyr Logarius to be a martyr that you'd think he would try to survive and spread that tale. Instead, he's just, uh, I don't know, perhaps he killed himself to become a martyr or perhaps something more ominous was at work. But I'm really not sure. I, I don't think there's really an answer and I think you have to figure out yourself. So some interesting things about where we're at right now is if you notice, there's all these uh, chained up weapons up here. And this is something I wish I'd put in my Healing Church lore video. And I just, I don't know why I didn't. But point is, you see all these chained up weapons here. And this is actually a workshop that we're in right now. And if we look at the uh, Radiant Silver, uh, the Radiant Badge that we got before. At least I think it's, no, it's not in the Radiant Badge. Excuse me, it's actually in the uh, Ludwig Holy Blade. It said the Silver Sword was employed by Ludwig, the first hunter of the church. The Healing Church workshop began with Ludwig and departed from old Garman's techniques to provide hunters with the means to hunt more terrifying beasts. Perhaps things still were. So the Healing Church workshop began with Ludwig. I'm pretty sure that this area right here is the Healing Church workshop. And then this upper area too is also the Healing Church workshop. So um, that down, that abandoned workshop, I think is the one that Garman... Created, as that's where his hunter's dream is located but I think that there are two different workshops and that this upper area is the healing church one that Ludwig was in charge of and that started with him it's been, oh, oh, oh. notice how little they hurt me for now because that's actually that's not from my gear per se it's more just from how much I've leveled up so um, that's how good leveling up does but again okay so take a look right here uh, right here you can see all those chained up weapons like that one right there. It looks like um, Well, I don't know. It looks like a scythe. I'll just stop there, but uh, You got all those saw cleavers hanging as well and All these different weapons so that makes it seem like this here is a workshop So again, I'm fairly certain that this is the first healing workshop area right here specifically um, Again like up here you see all those hanging weapons just all over the place. Oh god, oh god, oh god. Did not think you would be. He's so close already. He kind of just wanders around. Alright, you're going off. Oh, apparently you're not going off the ledge. I can't even push you. Why not? Why not? Uh, I think this is the way up, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. There it is. I wonder actually. Oh, cool. I was going to say, I, I never really looked around from up here before. But if you look up down, you can see that's that, uh, from Cathedral Ward, you can exit out, and there's that circular area that, um, led to that door that we couldn't go through. The door leading to the giant bridge you can go across where the, um, Cleric Beast is, but that's, that's what I think that is right there. Yeah, so, I think those are those, those stairs, possibly? From Cathedral Ward. Uh, it's always cool to look around and see what you can find in the distance. Like that right there looks like it might be Kanehurst. Possibly. Possibly. Maybe it's not. Because it's actually not across the lake. But could be. Hmm. Now I'm just more curious about where all these things are located that we're looking at. There's the Grand Cathedral Plaza right there. And your Grand Cathedral is going to be... Uh, I guess right... Yeah, Grand Cathedral is right up here. So, but there's the plaza itself down there. So, plaza's down there. And, yeah, I don't know. just really cool to look around. But, now, okay, here we go. So, you can see the Grand Cathedral very clearly right there. Um, with those shaky, creepy trees around it. But, there it is very clearly. And you can notice that there's actually sort of, when we were looking at it before, you can actually see sort of, like, a, a path over there that we've never been able to go to before. And that is actually where we're going to be heading. Oh, what do you know? I actually missed this thick cold blood, so... 
Those are the things you get for exploring and looking around. You get extra items like that. Oh, I forgot about these guys. Your flamethrowers don't got nothing. Again, we see more weapons here, so I really do think it's possible that this is the, the first workshop. So, I mean, I could just be wrong, and it could be the first healing workshop before. But, um, where Gearman was, but I think that this is it. Also, notice this, too. Now that's the red moon, notice how this guy is pretty much... I. Uh, uh, he looks a little more wolfish. He's just wearing a beak mask, though, but still. All these guys are very wolfish here. But we can actually finally go through here now, which is guarded by incense. Now we have that upper cathedral key we got from the guy who was wearing a choir garb in the, uh... In Yahar Ghoul. We have one of these creepy things right here. I haven't seen one of these before. Very, very creepy looking. Oh god, I'm missing a lot. They actually do quite the amount of damage that they hit you. They're they're really weak and like slow and easy to kill, but if they hit you, it's gonna be, hurt a lot. So that's kind of creepy. I don't know what that's doing by the upper cathedral ward. So again, here you go, that cathedral, you can just see the clock tower there. So really cool that we're actually heading up into it. Um, I like it. I like it. Oh, as I pick up this blue elixir, it reminds me that you guys are berating me and I want to correct my mistake. I called what, one of the items that you get lead elixir. And turns out it's actually lead elixir. So, my mistake for that pronunciation. Oh god, see these guys have a little, a little more powerful now. Still. You can get that parry repose, they're still pretty easy to parry. Whoops. It's just hard when there's a... Whoops. Hard when there's a couple of them. See, I don't even need to use my blood vials. I'll get all my blood back from using visceral attacks. So I don't know if you guys noticed that sound come back in, but... You guys remember the sound that we heard when we first went to Yarhargul? It wasn't in... When you go to Yarhargul the second time, the music's gone. That was playing, but the first time you're there, there's a song that plays, and this is the same song. This area, the atmosphere, this is really cool. We see more of these things. Which we still don't know too much about. But... Might as well take them out, because we can get blood echoes from them. Yeah, look at that. Really cool atmosphere. But yeah, the song that, that starts playing here is the same as it was in Yahargul. Uh, Alright, so we start seeing some more of these statues, and this time these look like those cloaked creepy guys that we found in Old Yarnum. Don't know if you can actually see into what the cloaks is inside the cloaks. Oh wait, look, this guy has a... Some sort of gnarled pole. He's also pretty gnarly looking himself. That's an old school term from the 90s. And not only is that, it's also in Super Mario World. There's a level called gnarly because they were using 90s terms for the secret areas of Super Mario World. Actually, Super Mario World is, in my opinion, the greatest platform game ever designed. Um, I There's probably, I don't know, yeah. I guess I would call it my favorite platforming game ever. I was gonna say, there might be platforming games I prefer, but eh, maybe not. It really, just the design of that game is so well done. Wondrous Rune. Is it indeed? It's a Great Lake Rune, which I think we found before, but it's probably a better version. Ah, there we go. Now you can hear the music a little bit better. Great Lake, let's go find it. Oh, we hadn't found it before. All damage reduction plus four. It's pretty nice. All damage reduction, not just defense, but everything. Uh, let's see, is this... Yeah, this is... The, uh, same descriptions that we've seen before. Yeah, it was a good room. Thank you, person who noted that it was a good room. Alright, we can't go here yet, so let's go around. But you've been telling me that my character looks like Peter Baelish from Game of Thrones. Or Kida. Kida looks like Peter Baelish from Game of Thrones. I don't... I kind of see it, but I don't totally think so. I think it's just the hairstyle, honestly, because the hairstyle is pretty similar to what Peter Baelish does. Peter Baelish, by the way, is Littlefinger, for those of you who don't recognize Peter Baelish as a name. It's Littlefinger's real name in Game of Thrones. Oh, God. What did it just do? I wonder. Oh, yeah, so the reason these things are so bad is because they cause frenzy. Pretty hardcore when they get you. And you know, Frenzy's not my friend. Hate that Frenzy. Alright, 
Oh, something also that you guys informed me, which is really cool that I did not know, did not know, was that apparently the wooden shield has a really good um, frenzy resistance. So that's really cool. I had no idea. Apparently, like, if those eyeball things come at you, this is going to be really good for some frenzy resistance. We're actually going to use the Hunter's Torch, though. This, If you guys remember, I was saying that there actually is an area that the torch is useful for. And we're now at that area, so you guys will see that soon. Had to be crows, didn't it? Had to be more crows. It's all right. These ones aren't so bad. Okay, maybe they are. They heard what I said, and they're like, Oh, you think we're not so bad? Well, how about this? Oh, these crows are taking me down. Oh, my. It'd probably be a smart thing to heal right now. But my honor wouldn't let me. Oh. I thought that one was dead. It's kind of hard to tell with these ones which ones are dead and which ones are alive. If they're dead or alive, the movie. It's a terrible movie. I actually saw it. Alright, Frenzy Cold Blood there. That's all we're gonna find in this lower spot, I believe. Some more of these statues. Look out if you want. Look at how pretty it is. I don't, I don't think that one's the Castle Caners, but we can see the lake from there. It actually looks pretty cool with the sparkling. All that detail, man, it just looks great. This game does look really pretty. I'm not I'm not a graphics snob, and I really don't care that much about graphics, but... Like, you could have a game like The Order, I think actually has better graphics than this. But it's all about, like, details, really. Attention to details. Is he gonna be smart? Ha ha ha! That was all I wanted. That was it. Yeah, these guys are still really easy to parry. Although he does a good amount of damage if he hits you, but especially since he's one of these later church member scythe guys. Their names have actually been revealed as the guy is out, and they are just called, like, church members. That's, like, all it is. Church member scythe, or something like that. I thought that they might be related to the Thumerians who are in the Chalice Dungeons by the way they look, but there's nothing to indicate they are or aren't. Disciple, King of the Cosmos. Thank you for your note. All right, so now we get the choir set. So we can actually see what this looks like. I hadn't really talked about it too much in the past because we had never gotten the set. But now that I've gotten it, I can really go into detail about it. Uh, let's go with choir gloves. I want to show the set off. And choir trousers. So this is the choir set, and we've actually seen it a few times before. One is from the guy who we got the actual upper cathedral key from. He is wearing this choir set. The other time we saw it was in, um, we saw this set in Bergenworth, the person who was near Master Willem. So let's go ahead and find out about the choir and who they are. Entire of the choir, high-ranking members of the Healing Church. Members of the choir are both the highest-ranking clerics of the Healing Church and scholars who continue the work at that began at Bergenworth. Together with the left behind great one, they look to the skies in search of astral signs that may lead them to rediscovery of true greatness. And uh, I think that's all we're gonna get on them, but that's uh, that could indicate why we found one at Bergenworth in the area of Bergenworth is because they were, um, They're trying to find out, like, and maybe figure out what Master Willen has been studying or stay around the area. Perhaps they're the reason that all contact to Bergenworth has been cut off is because maybe they want it themselves. It, it does lead to a lot of questions and pondering queries, if you will. So, definitely some good stuff to know or think about. The choir is actually really important. The school of Nessus and choir are, actually, are some of the most important in the plot. Alright, so if we look over here, we can already see that something's going to be going down. <laughs> we got some uh, couple beasts just hanging out up there. So that's not cool. Let's check out this area first. Pick up some madman's knowledge. And oh, what do you know? It's totally a trap. Holy crap, I didn't think you'd hurt me for that much. Wait for the leap. Okay, not going to leap at me. Oh my god. Holy crap. You're gonna kill me, aren't you? Nope. What the f- How is that not- Early- That was- Apparently that was too early. Apparently that was too early. Ugh. You with the blue eyes. You with the blue eyes. 
Give me back. What the? F Are you kidding me? How is that too late? Oh, man. I'm really frustrated. If you can't tell, just lost a lot of blood vials there. Pointlessly. I even got, I got that shot with him. I just didn't think he'd recover so quickly from being stunned. All right, so this is an area where you might just want to pull out your torch. Because, yeah, as you notice, it's really dark here and pretty hard to see, so. It's, uh, at least we got this nice light, though, shining down, you know? So we won't need it quite yet. Uh. Oh. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. Let's see. You can actually cheese the hell out of these, and that's what I'm going to do, because th because there's three. Yeah, if you can't tell, that is three beasts hanging out over there. Fortunately, they can't figure fit through this door, so I don't care. I will be the one to do it. Oh, he still hit me. Oh no, oh no. Being a little too greedy. It's not that I'm being greedy, I'm just not, uh, I don't know. I'm not being patient enough. Alright, I see you through that wall there. <laughs> uh, yeah, clip them through walls. You didn't know Bloodborne weapons could do that, but they, that's why these trick weapons are actually so powerful, is they go right through walls. Let's get some Bloodstone Shards. Thanks for the Bloodstone Shard. I was really excited to pick those ones up. Alright, check this out. More of these creepy statues, but, uh... Yeah, you can see, like, look how dark it is. You really want to have your torch out, and it does make a difference, so... Even though there aren't that many areas here where it's going to help, there actually are some, and this is one. Alright, doesn't open from that side, so... Probably going to be a shortcut we're going to wrap back around to. So let's check out the bottom area here. First of all, there's this item that it's leading to, but... Another, another beast. There we go. That time, I got it. Just all over the place. There's so many of them here. If you do remember, though, clerics became the worst beasts. Clerics become the worst beasts, so maybe it makes sense that here with the choir, which is a healing church place, we're finding some really bad ones. We also get this Ritual Blood 5. Really high-leveled Ritual Blood. It's the highest that we have, and it's actually interesting to look at. If you look at uh, Rank 2 Ritual Blood, you see something starting to come out of it. Rank 3, you can see skulls, like, a skull emerging, and now the rank 5 Ritual Blood, you can see a bunch of skulls coming out of the blood, so... Um, yeah, kinda, kinda creepy stuff there. So we can't go through this door yet, but that's something that we're gonna... We want to, though. We want to go through it. Alright, let's look at the left side first. And... Someone's leaving a message. I don't care. Don't need your message. So we get more of these guys. My favorite. My favorite. Cosmic Eye Watcher badges here, so you definitely want to go this way. Oh god. I hate these guys so much. I think you guys were telling me they're weak to fire. If I'm not mistaken. Hey. You. You, with the weird face. Oh god, oh god. Holy crap. Okay. Let's, let's knock him down a notch. And let's get behind him. Nope. No, 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 no. Damn it. I didn't know that he had an area of effect attack like that. Screw you. Get out of my life. Whatever. He took some insights. I don't care. I don't even care. Maybe I should be using the torch, or I should have tried it out. My hunter's torch I didn't rank up, so it's not really going to be all that great. Man, I'm low on blood vials at this point. It's almost worth it just to die just to get my blood vials back. Alright, so let's go ahead and look at this Cosmic Eye Watcher badge. So now we're going to be able to buy more from the shop once again. Uh, Cosmic Eye Watcher badge. Where is it? Badge of the Choir, Healing Church Elites. Badge of a member of the Choir, Elites of the Healing Church. The eye signifies the very cosmos. The Choir stumbled upon an epiphany, very suddenly and quite by accident. Here we stand, feet planted in the earth, 
But might the cosmos be very near us? Only just above our heads? So, that's going to lead into a little bit more of the choir that we will be finding out here. But first, we have to deal with a scamper. Alright, so apparently that's not their name. It's actually, now that the guy's out, we have their official name. They are called, um, like, Roaming Nightmares or something like that. I'm gonna keep referring to them as scampers. They're, they'll always be scampers to me. Yeah, so... Oh, come on! Come on! Come on! Right, screw you, ass face hole. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I'm trying to get him before he can get the grab in, but apparently he's too fast with his grab. Or you can't stun him, I should say. Alright, good, 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 good. Nope, nope, nope. I hate these guys so much. Should really try fire. I'm switching out of my torch just so I can shoot them, but I'm not even trying for the parry, which maybe I should be doing. Alright, anyways, that guy's done. <laughs> so let's go ahead and climb up here and see what other wonderful things we'll find. You'll find so many wonderful things. Alright, so there's another one of those guys. Fantastic. Just what I wanted to run into. Get some blue elixir. We're finding a bunch of blue elixir, so I should probably take a look at it. Items. Blue elixir. Hunter is able to retain consciousness by force of will, make use of a secondary effect of the medicine, which dilutes the presence while standing still. Um, hold on, there's more interesting stuff to it, but I was just seeing how close he is. Dubious liquid medicine used in strange experiments conducted by high ministers of the healing church, a type of anesthetic that numbs the brain. Actually, a pretty important one. Is that what you're gonna? Is that what you're gonna do? You just keep on doing that. What if what happens when I come behind you? Eh? Did you ever think of that? Did you ever think of that? Get out of here. Give me my quicksilver bullets, because that's totally what I needed. Alright, we get blindfold caps. So this is actually another piece of the choir set right here. So this blindfold cap, if you notice, uh you might notice it looks a lot like what Master Willem was wearing. In fact, also other members of the choir that we'd run into before. Entire the choir, high ranking members of the healing church. Members of the choir are both the highest ranking clerics of the Healing Church and scholars who continue the work that began at Bergenworth. The eye covering indicates their debt to the teachings of Master Willem, even though their paths diverged. So, the whole uh, not seeing and having no outward vision, again, really similar to Master Willem. Um, so, they're actually taking a little bit more heavily from him, as we do know that the Healing Church derived from Bergenworth, so some of them are listening to him a little bit more so. And we find a couple pearl slugs here. I've talked about the pearl slugs before, but I still think it's uh, really important to talk about them. Where is it? It's going to be material. Of all the strange life forms that reside in the nooks and crannies of the old labyrinth, the slugs are clear signs of the left behind great ones. We found these pearl slugs. We found one at Bergenworth, and now we find a couple more here. We're also going to open up this shortcut now that leads us back to the way we came in. So now we have a shortcut to go at least to this upper stratum of the upper cathedral. The upper stratum of the upper cathedral. Alright, so let's head over this way. Notice that we're seeing a lot of these guys, these uh, head suckers here. So it seems like these ones who suck out your insight are very uh, based around the cathedral. At least this one we can sneak up on, thank goodness. Thank goodness. Alright, this guy... Oh, I thought he was the one who dropped stuff, but I guess not. No, you get you get back. You get back. Uh-uh. He's gonna try to go for his grab, because that's just what they do after that attack. That one worked a little bit better. Alright, so you want to kill that one, definitely, because he drops the Orphanage Key. Which we're gonna take a look at. Here, the Orphanage Key. Key to the Orphanage, birthplace of the choir. Key to the Orphanage, birthplace of the choir. The Orphanage shadowed by the great Grand Cathedral, 
was a place of scholarship and experimentation, where young orphans became pro uh, potent unseen thinkers for the healing church. The choir that would later split by the healing church was a creator of the uh, creation of the orphanage. So the orphanage was the foundation of the choir. That was where it started. Um, and it seems like it's perhaps these orphans of the, um, of the orphanage who might have founded this choir, possibly. We're gonna get yet another shortcut here, so this is where the, uh, beast jumped out of. So, yet another shortcut opened up. And let's go ahead and check what's through this door. Why not? Wow, that's sunny. Or bright. It's very bright, and there's this guy stuck here, doing this weird pose. Let's let's talk, let's have a chat with him. Nothing to say, but we do get make contact. So this is the pose of the choir, right here. What he's doing there, and he's standing in some pro probably, presumably holy spot. Don't really know what he's looking up out at. There's the Grand Cathedral right there, but he seems to be facing this direction. I'm not sure, honestly, what the significance of that is. But some people are going to really like this pose, so let's go ahead and switch. I like all these poses I have now. Switch out Bag for Life for it. Alright, so this has kind of become the new meme. It's like the new Praise the Sun. It is Make Contact. So this is the new Praise the Sun. If anyone is curious, this, was ev this is what everyone is talking about and using as the Praise the Sun. The funny thing about this pose that I actually like a lot is if you stand and wait here for a moment... His arms get tired and he switches sides. I just think that's kind of funny that they actually have it so they switch sides as if their arms have gotten tired. So it's like, okay, as long as you keep the L shape going, it's all good. So that is the choir pose. I just wanted to show that off. Uh, let's see if there's anything else over here. I don't think so. I think it's just to get the make contact gesture. Yeah, that's it. So that's what we're going to find up here. And then let's go ahead and head back down now that we've got that orphanage key. Go see where that's going to lead us to. Alright. Yeah, you can see how dark this actually is now that I'm not using the torch. It's not like you can't see, but when I was kind of exploring around trying to look at things, the torch definitely helps a lot. So, the lighting does work. It's just they didn't really make too many areas where you feel like you need it, even though it does work. So... That's uh, that's all I really want to show off with that, with the torch. And now we're at the uh, use the orphanage key. We can go through this spot, and through here we're going to find some more frenzied cold blood. There's been a bunch of that. Let's go ahead and take a look at it since we've been finding a bunch of it. Frenzied cold blood nine specifically. The manifestation of madness comes from a mind teetering on the very brink, but has a sane mind ever produced anything of true significance? I don't know. You tell me. And what we do is we open up yet another shortcut. So, if you look over here where this is going to lead us to, it's actually going to lead us closer into the Grand Cathedral. So, that's actually something that's... It's noticed that that bridge takes us close to that Grand Cathedral over there. I want to point that out, but I'm going to go ahead and go back and do some level ups, and I will quick cut it and be right back. Very well, let me... Oh, so close with the blood tinge. So close! Just need one more level up. But now we can use Lagarius's wheel. So since... Well, I'll, I'll show it off. Back at the cathedral. Okay, so I was just noticing something that I want to point out with Lagarius's wheel. I'd said that it was blood tinge that you need to use it, but you actually need 10 arcane to use Lagarius's wheel, and it scales with arcane, not blood tinge. So I was actually mistaken on that, so I apologize. After I finish getting the... Uh, the blood tinge required for the Chicago. I'll go ahead and level up my arcade to show off the uh, the wheel. But here we go. So walking up through this uh, cathedral, upper cathedral ward area, we see these things. A it looks like they have a ton of eyes. That's what that would look like, like all over their arms. I mean, or they're like suction things. But given that we hear so much about eyes, I'd assume they're supposed to be eyes. 
But I don't know, maybe there's like suction cups. And some of them have flames and some of them don't. I don't know what the meaning of that is. What? What is the meaning of this? I, I really don't know. I really don't know. Oh! Hey, it's these guys! Remember them? We found a couple in the Forbidden Woods. And then we saw them at Yusefka's clinic. Well, that's weird. Those blue kin. Very odd. Hmm. But we see this nice garden over there, which has all these pods growing and... Very large pod-looking things. And if we keep on going along here... Boss fight? I don't see any boss. There's just a couple of these guys. Celestial Emissary is the name of the boss. Alright, so... These guys right here are going to infinitely spawn. It seems that this garden creates them. And I do want to show that off by killing a few of them. So you notice they actually come out of the garden. So what is the choir doing here? Where they seem to be like growing these alien guys. See that? They all spawn from this garden right here. That's that's odd. No, like And as you kill them, they, again, as far as I know, they infinitely respawn. So still haven't hurt the Celestial Emissary though. Which, huh. Okay. Keep on taking out these blue men for the time being. Yeah, see that? They just, they just keep on coming back. They just keep on coming back. Oh, trying to pop up behind me? I see what you're doing there. All right, yeah, they just, they're just gonna keep on respawning. I think I made my point clear. All right, well, let's check what's over this way. Hmm, don't see anything up here. Oh, well, we got all the blue kin to follow us, though. Maybe by this, like, well or something. Hmm. I'm trying to explore. The Celestial Embassy series actually hurt. That's weird. <laughs> Alright, so... What that tells us is that one of these things, one of these specific ones, is the Celestial Emissary. It's not you. Not you. Oh. Hey. Not, not nice. Not nice. Alright, where is it? There we go. Found it. I didn't notice before when I was hitting the right one. But yeah, so one of these is the actual boss, so... Here we have the Celestial Emissary, which... Oh, jeez! Oh, wow! That just changed a lot, so... There you go. I'd actually forgotten that was one of the little ones first that then become a big one. But that is the Celestial Emissary boss, so... Yeah, that, uh, what has the choir been up to here? And also, why are these things in Yusefka's clinic? Really good things to be pondering. And why are these so easy? <laughs> Listen, I don't want to be a dick, but I think your babies are, uh, pretty easy to kill. He's a little Dark Souls-ish in the way that I'm fighting him. If you notice, just dodge his attack. I think that this is one of the easier bosses. I mean, he does do that thing where if you notice, his, uh, right before I killed him, his head, all that gangly stuff started to come out of it. The googly stuff, those like twisty things came out of it. But um, yeah, that's um, that is the Celestial Emissary. Um, I, and then he starts to use arcane spells, which makes sense for the. F I don't know. It just makes sense for it when you start to consider everything. We got another communion though for killing him. Yet another communion. If you remember, we found one of them in. Uh, Yusefka's Clinic. So, there's actually four communions. I was wrong before when I said the most powerful one was in Yusefka's Clinic. I thought this was the most powerful one, but we found yet another one. Uh, they all say the same thing. Something I haven't pointed out yet, but it's good to note and notice is that... You notice if you look at the actual, uh, runes, the ones that are stronger and more powerful are more clear. So, I think that's actually a good thing to notice. And, uh, yeah. Alright, so we get another... Another spot right here. And actually, you, you thought you were done, but there's this right here, so we can actually break through a window. Some people were asking me in my story video who watched it how I got the shot of the upper or the cathedral ward from where I did. And this is how. 
So this is actually, if you remember, there's Lawrence's skull over there. Which, by the way, people have argued in some of my videos that they don't think it's Lawrence's skull and they think Lawrence is in the beginning. In the guide, there's actually an interview with Miyazaki where he confirms from his mouth, from the man himself, that is indeed Lawrence's skull. So that right there is Lawrence's skull. If people were curious, it is confirmed by Miyazaki in an interview. So uh, We get a call from beyond right here. So call beyond. Let's go ahead and take a look at that one. It is another arcane, create small star explosion. One of the secret rites of the choir. Long ago, the healing church used phantasms to reach a lofty plane of darkness, but failed to make contact with the outer reaches of the cosmos. Again, make contact is their, um, their emote that you can do. The rite failed to achieve its intended purpose, but instead created a small exploding star. Now a powerful part of the choir's arsenal. At times, failure is the mother of invention. So they're using phantasms to reach um, lofty plane of darkness. Oh, that's actually... We hear a little bit about phantasms, so it's one of those things like, oh, a word that I keep hear we're hearing, keep that in mind. I actually kind of see... Try to see what's on top of that chair-looking thing there. It's still hard to tell. I think there was something... I was going to look at... Oh, yeah, yeah. So someone was asking me about this personal effects menu and what the significance of it is. There's no specific significance of it. Oh, this one's gonna be the one that shoots Arcane. Oh, let's, let's stun lock him before he can do it. That's what it means when that stuff's coming out of their head. Uh, the personal effects menu is just another quick menu for using items. It's not as quick as your like up, down, left, right menu. Like right is to switch to this, left is that. It's not gonna be as quick as those, but it's just a little bit quicker. That That's all the personal effects menu is. All right, so let's go ahead and check out what this elevator does and where it leads us to. Oh, so you're not going up. You're actually going to be going down. So that's kind of odd. Well, we're now we are about down below beneath the Grand Cathedral, so um What did they build this thing on top of? Oh, that's that's interesting. The altar of despair, and this is what's underneath the Grand Cathedral. Hmm. So if we actually look at it, there's like light shining down and through, and onto that guy right there. So, I hate to do this this episode, but we're actually going to tackle that guy in the next episode, the start of the next episode. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know. It's just uh. That'll be the start of next episode, so let me go ahead and grab my... I want to level up again, and we're at about an hour now, so... This, I actually think, is one of the hardest bosses in the game. What? Where is what I'm looking for? Where is it? I need my Hunter's Mark. This... What? Why can't I find it? Because it's like, we want you to... Not that Hunter's Mark. The other Hunter's Marks. There it is. I'm an idiot. Don't know why it was giving me so much trouble finding that. But I do want to at least show, uh, briefly show this thing. So you can actually get pretty close to it without it bothering you, and there's a couple interesting things about it. One is that it, it seems to be praying. Or, yeah, it is literally bent down and praying to what looks like Rom the Vacuous Spider. So that's, uh, that's really interesting. Really, really interesting right there. And actually, it's so interesting, I want to get a shot of it. Sorry, I'm like, I don't have a good shot of this for my lore video. and Or my lore video is the fact that for some reason Rom is bowing down, or Ebriatus is bowing down to Rom the Vacuous Spider. Or something that looks a lot like Rom, I should say. Make sure you really ponder the significance of Rom and why is this great one doing that. Yeah, now you have some uh, secret, top secret stuff into how I make my lore videos. Usually I, I already get this stuff on my own, but I don't have a save that's very close to here at the moment. So I can't just get that shot pretty very easily. Yeah, also, uh, what we so we can't use this thing yet, but this, uh, this spider with all the eyes over it we can eventually use in... Yeah, this is uh, Ebriatus, which we've heard about before. So he's actually not gonna 
not going to be bothered with us unless we attack him first. So that is what we're going to do at the start of next episode. And I will see you guys back at the Hunter's Dream. Um, real quick, I think I was talking, referring to Ebriatus as a he, Welcome it is a she, so my mistake, and I think Rom is also a she, if I'm not mistaken. Alright, so now we can actually get another Blood Tinge, which I've been wanting to do. Oh, I need four more Arcane for Ligarius' wheel. Hmm. Farewell, I gotta think about me. if it's worth it. I mean, the thing is, we're getting defense for every level up, so it's not the biggest deal, but it still is, um, I don't know. <laughs> like, do I want to? I don't know. Alright, so Chicago, we can now equip. So let's go ahead and check this baby out. If you two-hand it, notice that it's going to start uh, whittling down my health. Uh, so that's a good, really important thing to note. That's what that one enemy hunter had. If I do R2, it can take out even more health. Uh, if I switch back to the unblood-tinged version of it, now I've just got my normal Chicago. And you can do a nice charging attack with it. I don't think the R2 of this is a charging attack. Oh, it is, actually. That's interesting. Well, good to know. So that is the Chicago. so it's definitely like, it's a risk. It's something you really have to think about when you pull it out. Or not pull it out, but when you use this two-handed mode, if you want to take the extra damage it's going to deal to you. But it's going to deal a lot more damage, so... Is that something you want to deal with or not? It's something that I want to get better with, and I think it's a really cool weapon, and the fact that they give you that risk-reward with it and it's enforced into it. In Dark Souls, there was the spell you could do, um, which would which would cause it so you would essentially have that, and this is a built-in effect where you just have to deal with it. And yeah, that's actually going to wrap up this episode, so I'm sorry we didn't do Ebriatus, but next time, next time, guys. And thank you so much for joining, uh, joining me this time. I hope you had a good time, and I'll see you guys next time. Happy hunting. Later, guys.